The Dacian Wars were two military campaigns fought between the Roman Empire led by Emperor Trajan and the Kingdom of Dacia led by Despol. The conflicts were triggered by constant Dacian threat to Roman province of Moesia and also by increasing need for resources for the empire, as it was heard. The Dacian kingdom had a bunch of gold essential for the Romans. These conflicts were triggered by multiple events like the early clashes, Domitian's Dacian Wars, the First War and the Second One. From 82 BC to 44 BC, Dacia reached its peak during Buobista's rule. He was a great military strategist, just like the Roman Emperor, Julius Caesar, representing a threat to the Romans. Julius drew some plans to invade Dacia, but was assassinated in 44 BC. The same year, Buribista was also killed and the kingdom split in several governed tribes due to dynastic struggles, which lowered the tensions. After that, the Roman Emperor, Augustus, came in conflict with the Dacian tribes after he sent envoys offering its support against Mark Antony in exchange for requests, the nature of which was not recorded. Augustus rejected the offer, and Dacia gave its support to Antony. In 29 BC, the Roman Emperor sent expeditionary troops in Dacia, which were led by General Marcus Licinius Crassus Dives, the consul of the prior year. He inflicted heavily casualties and killed three or five of their kings. Although Dacian raids in Pannonia and Moesia continued for several years despite their defeat, the threat of Dacia has temporarily ended. After 116 years of relative peace, in the winter of 85 BC, the army of King Juras, led by General Diopanius, attacked the Roman region of Moesia, killing its governor, who was a former consul. The Roman Empire, now ruled by Emperor Domitian, led some legions into the ravaged land to maintain stability and territorial position. After the Dacians were kicked from Moesia Inferior and Moesia Superior, Domitian planned an attack on Dacia in the next campaign season. The next year, with an arrival of fresh legions, under the command of Praetorian perfect Cornelius Fuscus, prepared for a war, which would become the first great military interaction between the two armies in 87 AD. General Diopanius sent an envoy to Rome, asking the Roman Emperor, Domitian, for peace, which was later rejected. General Cornelius Fuscus crossed the Danube River into Dacia with his legions on a bridge built by boats. As they were marching, a devastating blow would await them. As the Roman army was pushing deep into the Dacian territory, they were ambushed from all sides by the Dacian army who defeated that legion and killed General Fuscus. This ambush was called the First Battle of Tepe. The legions lost their banner and were humiliated, and General Diopanius was subsequently renamed Decebalus, the Dacian word for the brave, and was elected as King of the Dacians, reuniting the tribes. In 88, the invasion continued and the Dacians were defeated at their outlying fortress of Summers Agedissa by the Roman army under the command of Tedius Julianus. Dacia was also defeated at Tepe. Decebalus' main advisor, Vezinus, survived by hiding under the dead bodies of the fallen soldiers in the field. After this devastating battle, the Dacian king retreated and supposedly dressed the surrounding forest in armor so that Julianus thought it was an army and retreated. Decebalus, the former general Diopanius, who was known for its bravery, was now the commanding leader of the four tribes united by him, asked once again for peace, which was again refused, continuing the war on the battlefield. However, Domitian later accepted the peace offer due to instability along the Rhine because the legions were needed there to put down the revolt of Lucius Antonius Saturninus, the Roman governor of Germania Superior, allied the Marcomanni, Quadi and Sarmatian Yazgulyums against Domitian. Throughout the first century, Roman policy dictated the threats of the neighboring nations and provinces were to be contained promptly. The peace treaty after the First Battle of Tepe, followed by an indecisive and costly victory of the Romans, was unfavorable to the empire. Following the Peace of 89, Decebalus became a client of Rome, with acceptance of him as a king. He received a lump sum of money, and your financial stipends, craftsmen in trade, and war machines to defend the empire's border. The craftsmen were used by the Dacians to upgrade their own defenses. Some historians believe this peace treaty was unfair and that it might have led to Domitian's assassination in September 96. Despite cooperation in the diplomatic front, Decebalus still often opposed Rome. At that time, Rome was suffering from economic difficulties, 
largely brought on by military campaigns and due to low gold content in Roman money. As directed by Emperor Nero, widespread had confirmed rumors of the Dacian gold inflamed the military conflict between the nations. However, other pressing reasons motivated their military actions. Historians estimated that around 10% of the barbarians such as Spanish and Gallic warriors had access to swords as they were a noble thing for them. By contrast, Dacia had rich resources of iron and copper within their borders, being prolific metal workers. A large percentage of the Dacians owned swords, greatly reducing the Roman military superiority. Dacia also had 250,000 potential combatants, enough to enable an invasion by the Romans. It was also allied to several of its neighbors and on friendly terms with others which the Romans considered enemies. Rome had no concrete defense policy and would have not be able to sustain a war of defense. As such, the new Roman emperor, Trajan, himself an experienced soldier and tactician, began preparing for a possible war. That Dacia was considered a substantial threat can be seen by the fact that Trajan withdrew its troops from other borders, leaving them dangerously underarmed. After gaining the Senate's blessing of war, by 101, Trajan prepared his legions to advance in Dacia. This was a war that demonstrated Roman military capacity, ingenuity, and engineering. The Roman offensive was spearheaded by two legionary columns marching straight into the heart of Dacia, burning towns and villages along the way. Trajan even defeated the Dacian army at the Second Battle of Tepe where the Roman legions were previously devastated. In the winter of 101, the Roman army under Trajan had a mass near the later city of Nicopolis ad Istrium at the junction of Iatru and Rosista rivers in a state of readiness. They were prepared for a possible attack by the Sarmatian Roxolani tribes from north of the Danube, which were allied with the Dacians and resulted in a Roman victory for which the city was named. In 102, Decebalus chose to make peace once it became really clear that the Roman advance towards Sarmazegetica was unstoppable. The war had concluded with an important Roman victory and with establishment of a garrison and an acting governor of Sarmazegetica. As an aftermath of the invasion, a bridge, later known as Trajan Bridge, was built across the Danube at Drobeda to assist the legionaries' advance. The bridge, probably the biggest at that time and for the centuries to come, was designed by Apollodorus of Damascus. It was meant to help the Roman army advance faster in Dacia in case of an war. According to the peace terms, Decebalus got tentacle and military reinforcements from the Romans to create a powerful ally against the dangerous possible expeditions from northern and eastern territories by foreign tribes. The resources were used instead to rebuild Dacian fortresses and strengthen its military. But soon Decebalus would turn against the Romans once again. The Dacian king complied with Rome for a period of time, but was soon inciting revolt among the tribes against them and pillaging Roman colonies across the Danube. Trajan will later find out about the betrayal of the terms and would begin rallying its troops for a second invasion of Dacia. Like the first conflict, the second one involved several skirmishes that proved costly for the Roman military. Faced with a large number of enemy tribes, the legions struggled to attain a decisive victory, resulting in two temporary pieces. Eventually, goaded by the behavior of Decebalus and his repeated violation of the former treaty, the Roman army was ready to advance in 105. Within a year, they conquered the mountain fortress system that surrounded Sarmazegetica and moved closer to it. With the participation of the legions, Adiatrix II and Flavia Felix IV, alongside a detachment from Ferrata VI, the final decisive battle took place near the walls of Sarmazegetica, presumably during the summer of 106. The first Roman attack was unsuccessful and repealed by the Dacian army, but a local Dacian nobleman did an act of treason, destroying the Dacian water pipes that left the soldiers without water and food, and the city fell. After the capital was conquered, Decebalus fled away as far as possible, but was followed by the Roman cavalry and would rather end it all with a sword than to submit. Nevertheless, the war went on. Thanks to the treason of a confidant of the Dacian king, Bicillus, the Romans found Decebalus treasure in the river of Sargesia, fortune made up of 165,500 kilograms of gold and 330,000 kilograms of silver. The last battle took place at Porolissum, modern-day Moigrad. In the conclusion of this war, 
Trajan declared 123 days of triumph in the country. The Dacian gold contributed and finished future military campaigns in Europe. The remains of the mining activities are still visible, especially at Roya Montan. 100,000 male slaves were sent to Rome, and to discourage further rebellion, the legions Gemina XII and Macedonica V guarded the region permanently. The conquered Dacia was turned into a province, while the rest of Dacia was free but never formed a state. The two wars were notable victories for the Roman military that led to stability and relative peace in Rome, while improving Trajan's status and people's view on him, nicknaming him Ivy after he built many projects. As consequence, Dacia saw a huge demographic change. Out of 3,000 names, only 60 were Dacians, while 2,200 were of Roman origin. Outside of the conquered country, many free Dacians lived in Transylvania, allied with the Sarmatians, who raided the Roman Empire, but with no major effect. In the Roman Dacia province, the native population rebelled at least twice. It took some generation to Romanize the population. After some centuries, the Roman army pulled out of the region due to major instability within the empire. 